What in the world is that sound? Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host Dustin and this week we were supposed to be demoing the new Benson Germanium preamp um, but as I went to go film the demo I turned on my amplifier to let it warm up and got everything started to set up and suddenly through my monitor speakers I'm hearing this wind whooshing like like I had a microphone set up out in the wind and you heard a little bit of that at the intro to this video could not figure out what's going on. I made sure all my mics were muted. There was no sound coming from that. The only thing that was turned on and actually plugged in was my amplifier. And I suddenly realized that this wind whooshing sound is coming from my amp, which I've never heard before. It was such a crazy thing. So I thought, oh no, my amp's only a year old. What's going on? Our capacitor's blowing. What's happening here? Um, so I thought what we would do, I, I'm hoping, 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 this is just a uh, bad 12 act seven or two. So I thought what we would do is I've got the amp turned around behind me here. I've got my camera set up. We're gonna troubleshoot this together. And I'm gonna show you how to find out if you're gonna have to have your amp repaired or not. Cause I thought this is gonna be a great way to do it. We're either gonna have to learn this together or if I'm gonna have to have it repaired, then we'll follow this up with a me taking this to the amp repair shop and getting it fixed. So join me over at the demo board and let's see if we can get this amp fixed by ourselves. All right, everyone. What you're looking at here is the backside of my Two Rock Joey Landreth amp. Um, and what you're seeing here is you've got a power tube section over here, which are these big old hunkin' tubes here. This I'm kind of hoping is not the problem because these are a little bit more expensive to replace. And typically you, you can hear that wind sound from these. So that'll happen every now and then, but it also can happen if you start to have some 12 act sevens going out in your power staging um, and in certain places along the line inside your amplifier. So I think what we'll do is we're going to start off by checking out our 12 act sevens. Now in this amp in particular, we have 12 X7s in five spots across here, and then two in the back that are for the bias tremolos. Now, I tested the amp out, and I'm the, the tremolos don't really make any difference, and I had them both turned off when that sound was there. So I don't think it's the two tubes in the back. We're not going to mess with them. I don't, I don't think it's really worth our time. Um, the thing I want to start off with is we're going to, before we ever turn the amp on, we're going to take off these little covers, and it's super easy. You'll see there's a little groove up here. All you have to do to take off the covers is just twist them slightly, and they pop right down. They're actually on a spring. Now, I know all these are exactly the same, but I always like to kind of put them above the amp in the order that I took them off on, so I always put them back in the right order. That is probably just paranoia on my part. I don't think it really matters or will ever really make a difference to the amp, but that's eh, my own thing, so, you know, it's just my own OCD. Um, so what you have here, I've actually got the uh, manual to the amp pulled up on my phone here. So I wanted to kind of share a little bit with it. Basically, the way that this is all laid out is you, this far right hand side is your V1 preamp. Then you've got your reverb send and return, your reverb mix, your harmonic trim oscillator is this one. And then the phase splitter, this, this one right here is your 12X7 as well. So in that order, when you look at those, the most obvious culprits in here are gonna be your preamp, possibly your reverb sends, um, possibly the harmonic trim oscillator, but again, the, the trims weren't really doing anything. Um, and then you've also got your phase splitter, which can also be causing some of those issues. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the amp real quick. We're gonna let it warm up for a second because I wanna make sure that noise is still there and I'm not just absolutely crazy. So we'll start off with that. Let's see if we can actually hear that noise once this warms up. There it is. Everything's right there in the background. That is no bueno. So this is kind of hard to see from the position of the camera, but if I peek my head inside here, 
I can actually see that all these tubes are lit up when they're warmed up. That's a good sign. The first thing that you'll notice is if a tube doesn't light up, you got a problem with the tube. It's pretty easy. Or you sometimes you'll see sparks within a tube. If that's happening, then you obviously know you got a bad tube. None of that is happening right now. All these are lit up pretty well. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that. So let's turn this off because despite what the internet will tell you and despite what, like, even when I looked up this topic, there were so many people that were like, oh, turn it on and then reach in there and pop out this tube and see what happens. Do not do that. Don't ever pop out a tube when you have your amp turned on. It's not worth it. So many bad things can happen. Yes, you might be able to find the answer to a problem, but you might cause 20 others. And if you don't know what you're doing and you reach in the wrong spot, you can electrocute yourself and the amount of power that's flowing through some of these amplifiers can kill you. So do not do this when your amp is turned on. In fact, when I'm in here messing around with these, these tubes, I have a little power switch down here on the floor. I'm actually gonna cut off the power to the amp itself too, just as a double safety. So I highly urge you when you're doing that, if you've got a little you know, power converter down on the floor or anything, just flip the switch off, it takes you two seconds. I know it seems like a little extra step, but save yourself the extra step. So what I like to do when I'm troubleshooting these situations is I always start off with V1, go for your power tube first. So I'm gonna reach in there, these should be cooled off by now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just grasping the tube with my fingers like this, and it seems really weird, but you just wiggle your fingers back and forth. Hold on to the tube and slowly wiggle back and forth. It takes a few seconds. You're not gonna be able to just jerk these tubes out of there, but you're not gonna break them if you do that. If you do a real subtle, simple rocking back and forth like this, there's all these little pins on the inside of your tube, and there'll be one section that's kind of grooved. The important thing is when you pull it out, kind of take note of where that groove is at, because when you put a new tube in here, you're gonna to wanna to line those up together. So I, I noted that this was kind of lined up like this. So when I put the new tube in, I'm gonna line it up around the same way. It just makes it easier. You can wiggle the tube around a little bit to find exactly how it goes in, but it's just easier if you know how it came out. Now, I'm gonna replace these with uh, JJ Electronics tubes. I love JJ's. This originally had a tongue sole to tube, which is just slightly lower gain in here. So I'm sure the second that I put these JJ's in, I'm gonna get a little hotter signal in there. I may eventually swap it back to a tongue sole, but for this case, I just wanna be able to hear if that takes care of the noise or not. And JJ tubes will be very good at that. So I'm gonna pop one of these in. Again, I put, pick it out. I look, I make sure this is lined up. And really the only thing that you wanna make sure is if this is biased for like, these are 12 AX sevens, AX sevens. Um, there are some tubes in here that are 12 AT sevens. And you want to kind of match those across the board. So you make sure you put a 12 at seven if it's in there, you put a 12 act seven if it's in there, just match them back up to what's actually supposed to be in there. So I'm going to put this in. We're going to wiggle it back in. I got it lined back up. It felt it go in the grooves. And then what's kind of neat is when you have tubes here, you're going to see this little line right here on the tubes. I'm going to see if I can get this into focus here on the camera. But on the tubes, there's a little gray line right here. And that little component right there typically will line up to the sockets, these little metal sockets that are inside there. Usually when that is up touching the socket or inside the socket, you're pretty seated. You're, you're up in there and you're safe with the tube. So now I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this on again and see if that took care of the problem. So let's let her warm up for a second. It should take a few seconds before everything kicks on. And then we're gonna hear what happened. Oh, we gotta turn the power off, there we go. Okay, we're back on. Did you hear that? That wind was still there for a second. I can still hear it in the background. It's lower, but it's definitely still there. So there's still something wrong here. Interesting. All right, let's pop that out for a second. Now, we don't have these two tubes honestly are from the reverb. I don't think that's really causing the problem at all. Let's pull up our spec sheet again and see what the most likely culprit is. So I'd had the reverb turned off. I had the harmonic trim turned off and that is these two tubes right here. So this one is the bias trim oscillator. I did not have that turned on either. V7, oh no, actually, that's the harmonic trim, but I didn't have that turned on. Um, V7, 
This is our face splitter. Let's try our face splitter here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just grabbing that with our hands, we're wiggling it free. Good. And again, same way, it's kind of oriented the exact same way. That groove is right here. So I'm gonna pop that out, set it over here. And then I'm gonna put another 12X7 in. Still using those JJ 12X7s. Put that back in there. All right, now let's see what happens here. Please don't be wind, please don't be wind. Hey. There we go. The wind is gone. Now we're back up to the old familiar hum of the tube amp. I thought real quick I would take just a second to reposition the camera and I'm just going to really quickly show you how to change a tube and how to pull a tube from a little different uh, angle just to make it a little easier. So this is a different amp, but same kind of idea. So what you've got here is you've got that sleeve I was telling you about the little heatsink. All you got to do on these is you just push up, twist to the left and pull it down and it'll pop right off. Now your bigger tubes oftentimes will not have any kind of covering on there. These, you can just act like a normal tube and just pull them right out of there. Sometimes they'll have a little bit of a sleeve that will be holding it in. You just pop it up to actually release it, but you, it's pretty easy to get those out of there. But for the smaller tubes, sometimes they can be a little tricky. All you gotta do is take your thumb, your forefinger and your middle finger, and just reach up in here and you grab the tube. Don't squeeze it too hard. All you need is just a little bit of friction and basically we're just gonna wiggle this tube and it's gonna take a second to get it out of there, especially some longer tubes. You just kind of wiggle it out, wiggle it out, wiggle it out, nice and easy. Don't put too much force on it and just keep wiggling. And eventually this is gonna pop free. And then what you wanna do is keep a good grip on it because you, again, you kind of wanna see the orientation of the tube when it comes out of the socket and make sure that it's lined up correctly when you put it back in the next time. So I can feel it kind of popping now. And as it comes out, what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at these little pins and I'm seeing, okay, there's a little space right here in the back, kind of pointing back to this back corner over here. So if I know that when it's time to replace the tube, all I have to do is kind of realign that, those pins the way that I think it's going to go. Now, when I first get in there, I'm going to feel resistance because those pins aren't lined up again. All I have to do is just slowly turn the tube just a little bit. And then I'm gonna feel a spot where it's like, oh, that resistance just goes away. And that's when I know I've got it in there the right way. And I can just slide it back up in there. It goes, it clicked in. And then now I just kind of wiggle it backwards. Now, usually putting it back in is a lot easier than getting it out. They tend to go in pretty darn easy. And then you just take that little heat sink, you line up the little, little like that, come back up here, put it on, twist it to the right, and you're good to go. Now, there's one other thing that we can do here. I'm gonna turn this back off for a second. I'm gonna turn off my power down here. I'm gonna give it just one second to cool down. Um, I'm not a fan of wasting good tubes. So uh, the thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop this old tongue sole back into V1 and see if any of that wind comes back. It is possible that two tubes were going bad simultaneously. Sometimes one tube going bad can cause pressure on another tube and cause it to go out on you, but that doesn't happen a lot. So it's quite possible that this tongue sole really wasn't bad at all to start with. So I'm gonna reach back up in here. I'm gonna wiggle this bad boy free. Now, the longer you play an amp, the hotter these tubes will get. Sometimes you need 10 or 15 minutes to cool down. In this case, I'm not really needing that much time because we didn't turn it on for very long. We didn't play anything through it. So we're not really pushing it. So let's turn this tongue sole back in here. Wiggle it back up to the top. Now we're gonna light it up again and let's see what happens. Hopefully that noise won't come back. All right, I'm not really hearing any noise there. I think we're gonna try this. We're gonna leave it running like this and assume it was that face splitter tube. And then, you know what? I can always come back in. If I start to hear that sound coming back in, a little crackle there, then because that tongue sole is a little bit different, let's try that out. Let's see what it sounds like. And then we'll kind of come back to it. And hopefully that's taken care of our problem. But the most important thing is we've gotten rid of that wind wishing thing. It was just that one tube. And thankfully my power tubes are all intact. Now. If 
if that wouldn't have gone away, my next step would have been to pop out these power tubes and try them out and replace them. But you have to replace them in pairs um, because typically these two will, if one starts to go out in a pair, the other one will take more work and it'll start to go out as well. So you kind of want to use match pairs when you're taking out these big ones. And they can be expensive. One set of two tubes could cost you upwards of $100. So you always want to try the smaller, like 12 x 7, 12 at 7 tubes first because your chances are it's those and you, those are only gonna cost you like seven to 10 bucks. So save yourself some money. Don't replace all your tubes in a tube, a tube amp at once. You oftentimes don't have to do that. Many times these little tubes will go out and your power tubes may last you three, four years longer. So save yourself some money. I know a lot of people, if they see one tube go out, they'll replace the entire set on their amp. You really don't need to do that. It's, it's not necessary. Um, so, Give that a try. If you ever have that come up, that is my first step for it. I hope that helped you. Uh, I freaked out a little bit when this started happening to me. This is the first time it's happened to me. So I'm already feeling like this wave of relief coming over me. So I'm hoping that if any of you experience this issue, you'll find this video and it'll help you to, to solve the problem as well and hopefully save yourself some money on having to get this sent off to an amp tech. Okay, I know this was not the episode you were expecting today. And for some of you, this may not have done anything for you. So don't worry, I, I promise you there'll be more gear next week, but this was something that was so important and when I hopped onto YouTube, I couldn't find quite the video that I wanted to show me this stuff and I found a few descriptions online. So I just wanted to put this out there for those that run into this issue. I wanted you to see a quick way to troubleshoot it. So for anyone that runs into it, I hope this helps. And for any of you who are just, you may have a tube amp, but you've been afraid to get in there and explore or swap out tubes, hopefully this will show you that it's not that hard. You can get in there, you can pop those tubes out, pop them back in really, really easily. It doesn't take a whole lot of work to get in there and do that. So I'm hoping that this will help you get a little confidence to really get in there and do the work yourself without having to worry too much about it. So. Thank you all for coming out this week. Again, thanks to my friends at Palin Music for hosting me uh, on their channel. Please, I'll put a little link to them down below. Go give them a like and a follow. Um, they have got some amazing stuff going on over there right now. They're actually the place that I got this tube amp. So uh, please go give them a, a check out and, uh, and uh, take a look at their website if you get a chance. And also I'll put a link to my uh, What's This Button Do Dustin uh, on Instagram. Uh, please follow me over there. We're going to be doing some fun with the Benson Pre amp this week and next week I will be back to my regular regularly scheduled program we'll be doing the Benson preamp and then the following week I think it'll be the Mythos Herculean um, so there's some really really fun pedals coming uh, that I hope you'll join me back here for to take a look at so thank you as always for being such wonderful guest I appreciate you taking your time to come out here and hang with me um, if you have any questions if you want to see more content like this if you uh, are working on your own tube amp and just want a few tips and tricks please 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 comment down below I'll be glad to help you out if you need help finding a good tech to rep to uh, fix your amp, please reach out as well. Um, and I can help connect you with people in your area that can help you to fix an amp if you're having an issue. Um, I've got several friends kind of spread out across the country. So hopefully we can find you somebody good to help you out if you do run into a problem and, and need a hand. And if you're in the Kansas City or St. Louis or Springfield area, I've got some great techs here in the area that would be glad to help you out. So please, 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 please reach out and uh, I'll help you get in touch with them. Well, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Have a wonderful weekend this weekend. Take care and we'll see you soon.